Ukraine is creating new mechanized brigades. It's a sign that Ukraine's leaders don't expect Russia's war against Ukraine to end anytime soon. It could be months before the first of the new brigades is ready for combat. Forbes reports. Military land, which closely monitors the structure of the Ukrainian military, has obtained photographs that allegedly show trainees of the new 160th Mechanized Brigade. The new Mechanized Brigades will be trained in other countries and will attract many recruits from Ukrainians living there. The 160th Mechanized Brigade is reportedly training in Poland. The creation of new brigades depends on two things, successful mobilization and continued foreign support for Ukraine's war effort. Mobilization is the source of manning the two brigades. Foreign allies are likely to provide the bulk of their heavy equipment. The formation of the brigades comes three months after the completion of the previous expansion of the army. Since last autumn, the Ukrainian army has formed 10 new brigades, four mechanized, five infantry and a ranger. Infantry brigades are the lightest in terms of manning. They mostly ride on trucks. A Jaeger brigade is a medium weight force consisting of trucks and light armored vehicles. Mechanized brigades are the heaviest. They ride on tracked and wheeled armored vehicles and usually have a company of at least a dozen tanks. It is unclear how many brigades the army is currently forming and what they will be. There may be 10. On paper, the 10 brigades need 20,000 troops. Ukraine's mobilization law, which came into force in May, aims to attract another half million men to the armed forces by lowering the draft age from 27 to 25, adding penalties for draft evasion and providing more incentives for volunteers. The various ground forces, the Marines, the National Guard and Special Border Guard units control about 100 combat brigades and account for the majority of military personnel. The ground forces have suffered the majority of Ukraine's combat casualties, including potentially 60,000 fatalities. Ukraine must mobilize enough troops to replace losses, as well as add troops for new brigades and any support units they need. That's easier said than done in a country of just 38 million that already supports an army of a million. It is no coincidence that Ukraine's defense ministry plans to draw conscripts from a large pool of Ukrainians living abroad. About 768,000 Ukrainian men aged 18 to 64 had received temporary protection in European Union countries as of the end of last year, according to EU data obtained by the Associated Press. Obtaining armored vehicles could be equally challenging, and it is unclear whether Ukraine can do so without sustained foreign support. A mechanized brigade requires several hundred pieces of equipment, including tanks, combat vehicles, howitzers, multiple launch rocket systems, air defense systems, engineering vehicles, and trucks. Ten brigades would need 1,000 vehicles. To put that into perspective, in the first 29 months of the full-scale war, Ukraine's allies pledged to contribute about 12,000 vehicles to the war effort. Not all of those vehicles are available to the new units. They replace about 6,400 vehicles lost. It could be six months or more before the new brigades are ready for combat. In other words, these are the 2025 brigades, units that could be fighting in the fourth year of the full-scale war, the publication notes. The United States and Great Britain provided Ukraine with satellite images and intelligence about the Kursk region after the Ukrainian armed forces began their offensive in the region, the New York Times reported, citing American officials. As two sources explained to the publication, this information helped Ukrainian troops track the movement of Russian reinforcements that could attack the Ukrainian armed forces or cut off their possible retreat to Ukraine. Some sources note that as Ukraine expands its control over Western Russia, the risk of overloading the Ukrainian armed forces logistics chains and air defense systems increases. The transfer of additional forces to the Kursk region weakens Kiev's position along the front lines in eastern Ukraine, especially in the Donbass, where the Russian military is actively trying to advance. Washington is not sure that Ukraine will hold the captured territories in the long term. This is evidenced by the lack of trenches, minefields and defensive barriers that could protect the Ukrainian armed forces from counterattacks, New York Times sources say. A Pentagon representative, 
in turn, noted that the lack of defensive fortifications does not mean that they will abandon the holding of these territories, Kiev may be planning to strengthen its positions further on Russian territory in order to expand the buffer zone. Officials stress that the Ukrainian offensive in the Kursk region was carefully planned, but its success exceeded expectations. Ukraine took advantage of Moscow's slow reaction and is now acting more flexibly, the sources said. On August 23, the Washington Post reported that the U.S. presidential administration is discussing possible changes to the military aid package for Kiev so that it better meets the needs of the Ukrainian armed forces in the Kursk region. The Pentagon has already requested information from Ukraine about the necessary resources, but no decision has been made yet on adjusting the supplies. Possible supplies include armored vehicles and weapons that will help the Ukrainian armed forces strengthen their positions in the Russian region. One of the Washington Post sources emphasized that the U.S. does not have a full understanding of the goals of the Ukrainian operation in the Kursk region, since Kiev does not disclose its plans. The Ukrainian armed forces launched an offensive on the Kursk region on the morning of August 6. At the moment, the Ukrainian army has taken control of about 1,300 square kilometers of Russian territory and at least 94 populated areas, and thousands of Russian soldiers have been captured. The invasion of Russian territory by a foreign army, the first since World War II, and the failure of the Russian Defense Ministry to stop the advance of the Ukrainian armed forces have shocked the Russian leadership and made Vladimir Putin nervous, sources from among current Kremlin government officials told the Moscow Times. According to one of them, the president has not been seen so gloomy since the fall of 2022, when the Russian army fled Kherson.